say for the first half hour as people come in. You can do it. We also have um, general announcements at the very end of the meeting. If more people come and you would like to say, then that's fine. Um, does anybody want to talk? Does anybody know details of the solidarity with uh, Oakland that's happening to it? Okay, there is a, um, a protest plan, or I don't know if it's, like, it's not a protest. It's uh, just a standing in solidarity with uh, Occupy Oakland got raided, or um, got, had 300 plus arrests uh, last night. So at 7 p.m., a lot of people are meeting at the corner of Broad and Belvedere. And uh, there's, so there's a big call to do that. So we might actually be um, doing a shorter GA because a lot of the people that are typically here I believe are not are skipping tonight to go to that. So. Can I ask a question? Yeah, totally. Um, I was someone at the library was showing the YouTube footage of a, a Sunday fifteenth meeting. A subtitle of the Chris Dorsey incident? And what happened with that? Um, does anybody want to, uh, Jeremy, the taker? I, I, can, I can deal with it uh, since I'm the person that most directly deals with the YouTube uh, channel. I, I would uh, say that it's probably still there. It was just. Uh, my my question, is, question is what happened at the meeting? Uh, what happened at the meeting? Uh, reference Chris Dorsey. Is he still a member or what? Uh, I guess I can answer this. At the la our last meeting on Thursday, we. Uh, we voted to amend the minutes from the Sunday meeting to show that the proposal to expel Chris Dorsey did pass. And it was kind of contentious when it was happening, but uh, we resolved it to the group's satisfaction at the last meeting. So he's out. Yes. And there. Make sure I was in order, not out of order. How y'all doing? Good. Um, my name is Mark, and um, I just saw um, on my soapbox moments, um, I would like to use it for a point of inspiration to share some information that I came across. Um, one's out to Jet Magazine, and one is from us. And if y'all bear with me for three minutes or so, I'd like to share a little bit with you. One, I'd like to read um, our code of values and conduct. The following is our code of values and conduct. It was passed in mod by modified consensus on General Assembly of Occupy Richmond on December 4, 2010. This code of values applies to individual and collective conduct and official occupied activities, including General Assembly, occupation, and direct actions. We are a collective of people of all ages and diverse backgrounds that, in the spirit of nonviolence, utilize the principles of the First Amendment freedom of assembly, freedom of speech, freedom of religion freedom of the press, freedom to petition our government. We occupy our with intentions to petition the government, the government for a, re, for a redress of our various grievances. We occupy because we are dedicated to the promotion of mutual and reciprocal empathy toward our shared and inseparable human condition. We earn our value within the community by the support, protection, and maintenance of it. We promote a sober space while in occupation because the integrity of our movement is threatened by possession, sale, or use of any substance that may bring our community into conflict with certain laws and ordinances. We are an all-inclusive society, welcoming all who are interested in, in improving, improving and demonstrating empathy toward all people. We promote an atmosphere of solidarity and empowerment. We welcome a diversity of tactics and ideology because we we are because while we are among the 99%, we realize we all come from different backgrounds and perspectives, and these various positions set the context for our actions. We encourage more than anything people to act. We cannot speak for everyone, so we encourage everyone to speak. We are committed to educating and bettering ourselves in order to build a future based in justice where all human beings are treated with dignity and respect and given equal opportunity for transparent participation in decision-making processes. We believe that every person has the right to fight against <coughs> social and economic injustice. In order to strengthen our community and our movement, we will not condone the inter interpersonal and systematic oppression of anyone based on race, nationality, citizenship, status, sex, 
gender identity or expression, sexual orientation or expression, class, economic status, political affiliation, religious expression, physical or mental ability, age or appearance. We support and protect the rights of individuals to openly and freely express themselves with the understanding that our diversity strengthens us. We seek to make Occupy Richmond a safe space for everyone. We support and protect the rights of, of individuals to make and act upon their own individual decisions, excuse me, individual decisions and choices with the understanding that these personal decisions should not substantively endanger individuals or our community as a whole. We are Occupy RVA and our voices will not be sounded. I would like to add to that real briefly something I came across in the jet. As we know, as the stated, um, Black History Month is next month. And um, that's the share that I, not that you don't know this, but in this issue of the jet, it speaks to an activist um, who we have um, stepped into the spirit of or been handed the baton of, only one of many. And it's the title of this article, I encourage everyone to look it up and read it. It's called Legacy of Leadership. It's concerning Angela Davis. And I'm going to read a small, small portion of it because it's only a small portion here, but I'm not going to read it all here. It starts off, activist Angela Davis knew how to occupy a space in protest, in protest excuse me, long before the term became part of a pop culture. Today, Davis is still all about the struggle for human rights, and she offers words of motivation to others fighting for freedom and equality nationwide. That's us, y'all. Question, do you see similarities between the black power and Occupy movements? Yes, I hope that we continue to push the current Occupy movement in radical directions. The, occup the, occup the occupization of housing, foreclosed housing, the movement of people back into housing from which they were, were evicted on January 1st in New York, we cannot allow that energy to dissipate. Will the struggle ever end? Angel answers, I don't think we, we can ever imagine a time where there is not an ounce of inequality left in this system. So with that, I like to just use that as a point of inspiration that we do have work to do and that we do stand in good spirit with those who came before us and even though their struggle might have been a little different because of the time, the struggle is the same today. and I'm basically getting you guys to think. We are an organization. It's time we stop playing and face the facts. Uh, Webster's dic uh, Dictionary defines organization as a noun, or sorry, the noun as an administrative and functional structure. We raise and spend money. We have regular meetings on the future and direction of order. We have a predetermined structure to get things done through a somewhat dysfunctional oh, process. I think General Assembly fits the bill. You could uh, then argue, well, we aren't legally an organization because we don't exist on paper. I then ask you, do you think uh, the FBI, State Police, and Richmond City Police don't have files on this non-organization and as such or do they have us as an organization uh, if you uh, believe that they uh, have us under the heading of a low-level terrorist organization as many of us fear uh, after NDAA then I assure you we exist on, on a piece of paper somewhere uh, whether we approved it or not um, legally, a gang isn't a legitimate organization either, but they still get uh, to be treated as an organization in court. So why do I think uh, this to? Why do uh, I? Sorry. So why do I bring this to your attention here at Soapbox? The answer is simple. I believe there is power in knowing who and what we are. Except. Uh, this so that you can um, be better and bigger in the future. Thank you. Yes. 
if uh, Chris Dorsey is no longer with us, can we uh, invite back those who left because of Chris Dorsey? Uh, some of the more valuable I, people, I, we might I want them back. Question. touchy on, on that address, Megan. I understand, you know, uh, what you're saying. I think this is um, still an open door um, public um, gathering, and if they follow the minutes and talk to any of us, they'll understand the outcome, and they should come back on their own. Yes, I would like to say this. Um, I think that the Seems like people in the organization, this organization want me to make me feel like I made a terrible mistake by friending Chris Dawson. I've been friending a lot of people in here. I came in here with a lot of love in my heart. I mean, 32 years I've been fighting these people in this city on behalf of those that have not. So I came in hoping that you all were the angels, that you all were the blessing that the people needed of all colors. But it looked like I walked into a pit from hell. My thing is, people were so upset with Chris Dawson, they rolled me right along in with it. Now I'm being attacked all on the internet. I mean, I've only ever sent two emails in my life. I don't, I've never been on a website, a chat, in a chat room or anything. But for the awful things people are saying about me, I will fight for what I believe in. For 32 years, 61 awards, plaques, and certificates that this is that I earned from the city of Richmond, that was not easy. So I'm saying to you, all I kept asking was for the organization to be honest, to do the right thing to have leadership that was not racist or biased. I don't know what has happened. I'm seeing people leave. A lot of people surely have left. But trust me, they did not all leave on behalf of Chris Dorsey. When we had that meeting here that last Sunday and Chris, it was voted not to put Chris out, you all saw when I left, you saw a wheel snap throwing things down, cursing like he had done before in the church, I said to you, Chris Dorsey was not the only one. And until you all can be honest with yourselves and become adults, even though you're over 18, and stand up and do the right thing, you all can't help anybody in this city. You're not even going to be able to help yourself. I had a dream. And I don't have them like that. You see the University of Richmond where the people were pepper sprayed up there? That's what the city of Richmond got for you all. When you all go out there and call people names, all this time you all have wasted in these GAs. You could have helped got the homeless people off the street. I've been asking to help in different organizations to raise money. And I told a young lady the other night, I, I was a fundraising queen at Murray Monthly, William Fox, all of those schools. But I told her, as long as Will was on there, I wouldn't help you raise a dime. I didn't care if you had to go to penitentiary for a while. I would lift my hands to help some of you all, and that's a bad thing. But I say this, and this is the end. Have respect in this house. I don't care if you're Mormon or Catholic. This house represents something. It should. And for those that don't like the truth, they don't need to be here because they're carrying you all down. The FBI does have files on this organization. 
No, you don't have a license and all of that. So, how you get so big and bad you want to put somebody out? Because he shares his ideas, people steal his ideas, get on the TV and talk about it, wouldn't let him talk to the press. But we got um, information from the GA a long time ago. They say, Miss Teddy, you don't have to always come to the GA for everything. Say the same thing to Chris. So my thing is, we just need to let go, start over again. Um, I doubt if Chris is coming back. He might come back, but that's his right because it's an open door. And he is one of the first occupants like I was. And I, like I told you from the beginning, I'm not going anywhere. And if I go, it's not going to be good. Trust me, I still love you guys, but I didn't come to fight you all. I came to fight the 1%. So I don't know what the problem is with some of you all. That's all I have to say. We one color, one race, the human race. Get it and know it. We have eight minutes left. I heard this week from somebody who hasn't been with us but maybe once or twice at Kanawha was, you know, stay positive, stay patient. Um, I think it's very difficult for us to foresee the future, um, but we can do a lot um, to plan for that future um, by staying positive and also addressing our failures and successes together. Um, what, what has worked and what hasn't. And I think we can go back in time a little bit and look at our history a little bit more as an organization or a non-organization. And we might understand ourselves better, you know, why some people think this is an organization and always refer to it as this way. Or why some of us will never want to refer to it as an organization. Um, one thing I just wanted to share because I thought it was interesting a lot of people haven't seen it. Um, Whenever I asked them, hey, did you see that Adbusters tactical briefing that said this? Um, yeah, because one, I'll back up. Uh, one thing that um, always seems to get 100% approval here whenever the phrase is uttered is get money out of politics. And it's not a coincidence to me that the people who announced and coined the phrase Occupy Wall Street stated that they had one simple demand based around that idea to separate money and politics. Um, they said, quote unquote, we demand that Barack Obama ordain a presidential commission tasked with ending the influence money has over Washington. It's time for democracy, not corporate, uh, corporatocracy. And they knew that uh, Americans, right or left, could get behind this. Uh, they imagined more possibilities, such as reinstating the Glass-Steagall Act or uh, three strikes and you're outlaw for corporate criminals. But they, they stated beginning from this one simple demand, um, a presidential commission to separate money from politics. They also invited people to comment on that message and, and zero in on what that one demand would be. And for better or worse, the people who went to Occupy Wall Street decided to not make a simple demand. They decided to list their grievances. Um, you know, per, whether that was a su success or failure, I don't know. Personally, I think it was a failure. And I think if we're going to, you know, talk about our vision or reoccupying to get that vision heard in the future, we need to really think about what's worked and hasn't worked and have that conversation as a group. Um, you know, personally, I, I think it failed because the, that that's an ultimatum, an ultimatum's draw attention from the, they, they, they get the people's attention um, and they demand a response. Above all, they demand a response. And, you know, you, you saw it in Tahrir, they got their response. Whether it's worked or not, I, we still don't know. They're still out there fighting the same fight. Um, and the ultimatum that was brought to us last Sunday worked. It wasn't inside our process. But we all looked, in, we all looked at it and recognized the seriousness of it the importance of addressing it right then and there. 
that, that was a demand. That, that was an ultimatum thrown at us. And so, um, I just wanted to point that out and say it's something I've been thinking about. Um, and I don't know if we will make a demand or several demands, but when we're in this room, there's not many of us right now, and we have a huge responsibility to think about what everyone wants. Um, fighting for the 99% is no joke. That's a lot of people. Um, I'm sure we all want to see different things happen, but where can we really start? Um, way up there. So, thanks. That's all I to say. Vaughn is up next. I was told by uh, Brand that she has a prepared statement. Um, so I'm going to um, see if everyone, because we usually get put three minutes on the box. The, um, can you get a temp check from everybody if they'd be willing to extend it for to get the whole thing out without disruption? Um, anyone stay aside? And anyone oppose? Nope. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'd like to uh, pass this book around so people could look at it. Um, it's about something called the Earth Charter. I'd like to pass this around and get it back. Okay. Um, <coughs> The Occupy movement is aligned with the well-established global movement that you may not even know about. And this is a really important thing to me. I would like to introduce you to a powerful document, the Earth Charter, which forms the framework for a nonprofit worldwide organization that could help the Occupy movement become more securely established and achieve its goals in economic justice and social justice. This document was created by an NGO called the Earth Charter Initiative, whose official mission is as follows, to promote the transition to sustainable ways of living in global society founded on a, share, a shared ethical framework that includes respect and care for the community of life, ecological integrity, the universal human rights, respect for diversity, economic justice, democracy, and a culture of peace. The text was drafted with the input of participants from 80 countries over a period of 10 years. The two of the commissioners who helped write the Earth Charter were Michael Gorbachev and Jane Goodall. Governments, institutions, religious organizations, and NGOs representing millions of people have endorsed the Earth Charter. The main thrust of the Earth Charter is environmental sustainability. It stands for the proposition that we truly <coughs> are stewards of each other and, and of this awesome, beautiful planet we call home. But it also holds out hope for a global ethical society built from the bottom up, the same as the Occupy movement. It affirms social and economic justice, the eradication of poverty, nonviolence, and care for the community of life with understanding, compassion, and love. There are 16 principles um, which are broken into four foundational values. Respect and care for the community of life, ecological integrity, social and economic justice, democracy, nonviolence, and peace. Each of the principles in turn is supported by specific action steps. I would like to focus on three of the 16 principles that I believe are congruent with the Occupy movement. Principle three, which comes under the value of respect and care for the community of life, states, build de democratic societies that are just, participatory, sustainable, and peaceful. Two action steps listed under the principle three are as follows. Ensure the communities at all levels guarantee human rights and fundamental freedoms and provide everyone an opportunity to realize his or her full potential. Second one is promote social and economic <coughs> justice, enabling all to achieve a secure and meaningful <coughs> life that is ecologically responsible. I point out this principle because Occupy Movement clearly shares the goals of building a democratic, open societies that are peaceful and sustainable. Principle nine, eradicate poverty as an ethical, social, and environmental imperative. Its action steps fo focus on meeting basic needs such as food, 
sanitation, clean air, and clean water, empowering every human being with the education to obtain a secure livelihood and safety nets for those who cannot, as well as recognition of the ignored and protection of the vulnerable. The Occupy, the Occupy movement stands for the rights of the 99%, reflecting these Earth Charter values perfectly. Principle 10 reads, ensure that economic activities and institutions at all levels promote human development in an equitable and sustainable manner. One supporting action steps requires multinational corporations and international finance organizations to act transparently in the public good and hold them accountable for the consequences of their activities. Others speak to the issues of equitable distribution of wealth within and among nations, enhancing resources and developing nations and, and ensuring sustainable environment practices in trade relations. Occupy, the Occupy movement has underscored the importance of transparency in national and international financial affairs and accountability in corporate activities. I would encourage Occupy Richmond to go further and taking into the account the destruction of our very planet, our only home. Occupy Richmond can piggyback on work that has already taken place nationally and internationally to articulate and to actionize the Earth Charter principles. As an established non-governmental global movement, the Earth Charter Initiative can serve as a guide to help Occupy articulate its own values and principles for making a better world. The Earth Charter also lends itself to many types of action. Um, in Philadelphia, for example, I helped, <coughs> out, I helped put on an Earth Charter Summit last year. Something similar could be done here in Richmond, and Occupy Richmond could be a part of it. Cities throughout the world have endorsed the Earth Charter. Occupy Richmond and our allies could approach Richmond City Council to seek its endorsement of the Earth Charter. We could also align with on ongoing Earth Charter efforts to use the media and social media to raise awareness of issues of environmental, economic, and social concern. Another option is to use the Earth Charter as a framework for school curricula, as, as activists have done in Japan, Australia, Mexico, and other countries. As the Earth Charter brochure puts it, Let's, let, let us be a time remembered for awakening of a new reverence for life, the firm resolve to achieve sustainability, the quickening for the struggle for justice and peace, and the joyful celebration of life. We can save the world by choosing to love one another instead of fearing one another, and, we can to, and to love the planet <coughs> instead of destroying it, and to love the planet instead of destroying it. The Earth Charter can be our guide. Every individual, family, organization, and community has a vital role to play, including Occupy Richmond. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Vaughn. Cool. That uh, Thank you. takes us past the uh, free speech for this evening. Uh, there is something going on tonight at uh, 7 p.m. Um, if anybody does not know, uh, <coughs> Occupy Oakland uh, tried to take a community center. Uh, last night and suffered 300 plus arrests. So they had a national call that at 7 p.m. Um, occupations uh, across the country uh, stand in solidarity with them. There is going to be a, um, a uh, demonstration at uh, Broad and Belvedere at 7 p.m. which will run past our typical GA. So what, we're, what I'm wondering what we're going to do, I would like to take a straw poll, if you would like to do a quicker GA. Um, with the goal of getting, wrapping up by 6.30 in order to get there at 7. So all of those in favor of that, you see, okay. I have 24. Um, any stand asides? It's a stand aside. Oh, well, I'll, I'll do the vote down after that. So uh, stand aside, one, all right, and against. That's one. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to run into um, um, informal proposal or work group announcements uh, right now. Uh, then informal and formal proposals, general announcements, and close. So is that okay with everybody? <coughs> to move forward. Awesome. Uh, the facilitating team tonight. I am the moderator. My name is Ron. Uh, Sarah will be taking stack. So um, she'll be calling out, um, giving you, assigning you a number when. Um, 
stacks are opened, and Jeremy is scribing, and Graham is temp and time. Is that right? Yes. Uh, I just have a brief question. Do we have a stock of like poster board and markers for later tonight if we don't have signs, or? I'll, I'll go make okay. staples run. Uh, I, have, I have cardboard and I have markers in my corner. Okay, cool. I've got a sure. I have a huge amount of cardboard and I live right next to there. Okay, awesome. So we can organize that at the end of the meeting. Um, cool. So right now we are opening up to work group. Yes. Are people going to actually get arrested? Or? No, I mean, no. It's just going to be the same salary. We're not doing anything um, that, I, that I know of that is. Um, high risk at all. It's just a, like a candle vigil type thing. We like may be outside breathing. the jail. We may be breathing. <laughs> we, we have, and we have candles. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, is any, are any, are any work groups have announcements right now?